is the continuation of the last video. Uh, we created an org mode file, uh, which contained meta information. It contained a headline. It contained some text with a link. The link went to the named code chunk here. And we used, um, uh, we, the code chunk contains C, um, a C statement, and we executed the code chunk to get these results. Now, one nice thing about um, org mode is that if you have a lot of code, you can hide it in the, um, um, you can hide the uh, um, uh, parts of the program simply as a headline. So you see what happens if I click on tab, um, the code is hidden here. And the same thing, actually, the same thing works uh, for all headlines, not just for code chunks. We can do it like that. And um, again, tab toggles between closed and opened headlines. So I'm going to leave it open for now, and I'm going to open the uh, code chunk again, click, clicking tab, entering tab. What I want to do here is um, I want to uh, tangle or extract source code files from the code block. Um, I've already written down the, uh, the command sequence that we need to follow. So it's like 10 different steps, but the uh, video nevertheless would be much shorter than the previous video. So the first thing is we need to add some header information if we want to uh, create source code files. And that's going to add them right after the C. The order of these, uh, uh, this meta information, the keyword and the argument here, uh, main yes, results raw, and exports both doesn't matter. They can be anywhere on the header line, but they have to be on this line. So the header line cannot be, for example, broken like that. It has to be one line. So uh, right after the C, uh, after the space, I'm going to put the information in Tangle, which tells the org mode that there's a file to be tangled between the begin source and the end source. And I give it a name, namely hello.c. Then I also uh, specify comments both. Uh, now, the first one is clear. Uh, basically, allow me to tangle or extract this file and name it hello.c. The second one means that I would like this hello.c file to not just be the code, which are these two lines, but I would like it to also contain comments. Now, if you put in comments both, what happens is that the previous um, text chunk, in this case, this area, will be taken as a comment to the file which makes a lot of sense because normally before a code chunk, you say what it does. Let's have a look at how, how, that, how that pans out. So um, uh, now we've done the first thing. Inside the code block, that's the second thing we need to do. We need to now enter a function. Functions begin with the meta key or the alt key followed by a function. In this case, the function is called org babel tangle. This is because we are in org mode and we're using the babel package and we're going to execute the operation tangle. Now, as usual, there is a short code for, um, for the org mode, uh, for the Emacs command. In this case, the command is cccvt. But the thing is, you might not be able to remember this if you don't do a lot of tangling. So um, as soon as I, let's say I can't remember what this was about, what the command was, and I can type control alt x, you see in the echo area on the left-hand side, MX appears, and then I know where I'm in org mode. Oh, there's a lot of org modes commands. I'm just tipping spacebar to go on, and it's automatically completed. So there's a lot of org commands, and I want to uh, I want to use Babel, so I enter Babel. And there's less commands with org Babel because this is only the commands to extract run code blocks. And now I can see here on the list, if you remember it's called tangling, I can enter tangle and here it is. So that's the only command like that. Now, as soon as I press enter, um, what will happen is um, the uh, code chunk will be tangled. You will see a message at the bottom, but you also will be informed right after putting in the function if there is a key sequence. So just watch the message area where the cursor is right now. And uh, the first information is tangled one code block. This, uh, get this information back, tangled one code block from first.org, which is our buffer. And the second information, which you saw for a moment, is that this function is bound to this key, CCCVT. Uh, but this you don't get back until you do it again. I'm going to do it again, just in case. 
So org Babel Tangle. Hold its one code, and here you see the command org Babel Tangle. Babel Tangle can be used with another function. Now, um, this has happened, but where is it? You know. Um, now, what I need to do in order to check where it is is I can either go to my direct buffer, Control X D, to look at org mode, and then. I don't even have to refresh the command. The file is already here. So that's the result of a tangled file just a minute ago. Uh, but what I want you to do, I want to go back control X B to the first.org file. I would like you to um, go through compiling and executing this file on the command line. So we're going to enter, going to do a, a split the buffer with control X2 into two parts. And I'm going to go down to the bottom buffer, control X O, and I type MX E shell. This is another function, um, you know, mxe shell. This is not tied, I think, to any key sequence. Uh, so all I do is enter mx shell, and in the bottom buffer, a shell will open, a console. There you go. Yeah, it's welcoming you to the emacs shell. And this shell, this is a full, fully enabled Unix shell. So emacs here simulates a Unix operating system, and you can use all kinds of Unix commands, but not all. One new command that you can use is ls for list uh, space minus la, which means all the information in a long form. And if you type that and enter after the prompt, the prompt, by the way, of the shell is this. This is the prompt. The prompt has two parts. It has a prompt symbol, which is stored as a variable. You can change that too. And it has the location. So it tells you I am in one directory of my home directory, which is tilde slash in the directory org mode. Yeah. So I'm going to go to the end of this line. This is an Emacs buffer. So all my commands, control X, control B, beginning of the line, uh, control K, uh, control um, forward slash, all of this works inside this shell. So I go to the end of the line, control E and press enter. And here's the, the answer. And this is actually uh, the long all the information, all the information, long listing of my buffer. If I compare this with direct, I'm just going to go up for a moment and go back to the direct buffer or mode. You see it looks uh, very similar. The difference is that uh, this here is a uh, buffer inside Emacs, and this is a the output in the, of a shell inside Emacs. So what I want to do is I want to compile this program hello.c, which is binary. So if I if I'm brave and I go in direct and look at it, um, actually, sorry, that's hello.c is a source code program. It's not machine code. So I wouldn't have to compile this program and run it. To compile it, I need my uh, GNU compiler, GCC. Um, if I'm not sure if it exists, I can type here which GCC tells me where the location of this compiler is. There's an exe program. And I can get the version, if you remember from the video, um, from the video with the uh, installation, I can type the version of this compiler. But what I really want to do is I want to compile the program. I want to compile hello.c. I want it to have an output program that's just called hello minus o, and I want to compile hello.c. So this is a standard way of compiling a program. I'm doing this, and uh, there is a little um, um, warning here, even though I didn't even switch the warnings on. Let's check if this makes any difference. No, because there, as you can see, there is an hello executable file there. So as I say here in the comment, um, execute the file simply by entering hello. Better is to enter dot slash hello, but just hello will do as well. Oh, sorry, hello is not found. Um, and then there you go. I can also type hello dot exe, same thing. Normally in Unix, I would expect to have to give the location of the file, but apparently this is not uh, not the case, so I don't actually I can't do this here. That's what I wanted to show. And now um, the last thing is uh, is shown in the script here. The very last thing we want to do is take a look at the hello.c program. There's again different ways to do this. We can um, view it in the shell, or we can go back up, Control X O to the buffer, and uh, uh, look at the hello C program just by entering. The hello.exe program, of course, is binary. There's nothing to look at. But the hello.c program we can look at. And here's the result. Um, I'm going to go down and open the, the first.org file. Here's the result of putting in comments both. Yeah, so what it has done is 
it has uh, given the program, the program lines that we put in here, print hello world on the screen puts hello world, has surrounded it. That's the effect of the main yes with a main function. And it has taken uh, all the comments uh, from right before the code chunk and put it in here as a comment. Yeah. Um, plus some other stuff, but this is just the link, actually. This is the link information in here. So if I don't have a link, this would look a little simpler. But the point is, this is a perfectly formed um, source code file. So um, yeah, that's the end of the film.